Okay, so here we are with Simon Barton, the man. It's been a while, so we've been trying to talk to you, and uh, last week didn't work out, but we are back here this week. Second time lucky, as they say. Um, so thanks for taking the time. It's uh, nice to be able to talk to you again. We haven't met in a while now. I mean, I don't know. It's been my timeline is all messed up, but it's been a few months, I would say. Yeah? Since I uh, actually physically saw you, yeah, it's been a while. It's been a while. Uh, okay, um, nice one. So uh, the idea behind this crazy interviews that I'm, you know, we're going through every now and then with people that I met many years ago, people that I met through Krav Maga, people that I met through different, you know, uh, walks of life. And of course, you have a very interesting story and uh, we want to hear it. We want to make this, uh, as I call it, we're going to keep this for the future generations and all my three followers, pretty much. Yeah, I have three followers online. So, and probably one of them is my mom. So carry on. Tell us about it. Tell us from the beginning. What's your background and, uh, you know, and the whole thing, life, start with you being English. You were born in England. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm, so I am 58 next month. So I was born in um, 1962. I'm a child of the 60s wow. and uh, grew up in South Yorkshire. Um, sciences at university, then left that, became an accountant. No, but hold on a second. You, you've been very brief on all this. Tell us about university. You know, break it down a little bit more because I've I know your story a little bit longer or or, or better than that. But uh, went to university. I was uh, yeah. Well, I played I played volleyball. And I did some karate at university. That was my first taste of martial arts. Oh, wow. But uh, but volleyball was my main sport. So the the karate kind of took second place. And when when time pressures became you know became critical and the the, the the karate kind of went to went to one side but i i studied it for a while it was uh that was interesting you can always tell when doing krav maga people who come from a karate background you can you can see from their timing um <laughs> what, what they do you can use you, you watch somebody you go karate and they go yeah how do you know yeah you can always tell yeah i know i love when we have any trial classes or induction classes and you ask people have you trained martial arts before no 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 and then after five minutes of the warm-up they are with their hands in a belt and throwing punches and kicks and i was like oh that that is karate and i can't even tell what style that is oh how do you know because these things you know they stick with you and become a second nature somehow is there it's, it's sleeping somewhere in the back of the head yeah you can see that they, they know how to kick they can do a side kick you often you, you, you see people who've done it before whereas uh, pe people who've not done that before have real difficulty with those with the sidekicks the pivoting and all that yeah yeah and what, getting what, the knee up and and, and, and so on so um, tell me about university you went for which one was it remind me again was it oxford or cambridge 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 wow that's interesting so let me let me tell you this from the guy who came from the other side of the planet cambridge is like heaven more or less you know people that live in narnia and uh from my point of view of course but then then uk for many years is a kind of a natural but it's still not very natural for most of the people here yeah, it was uh, it was it was a fantastic experience, and I met my wife there as well. Which is, I can imagine. What, what year was that? 70, 80, 75? No, eighty one. I went. Eighty one. Eighty okay. one. Yeah, I had a year um, fooling around as people used to do in those days, wow. um, and went to work abroad for a bit, and then yes, yeah, so I went in nineteen eighty one, and Judith was in the year below me. Wow. And what did that you study? Yeah, sciences. So yeah, metallurgy, material science. Wow. So you're the scientist, as they call it. Yeah. Yeah. That's um, so I, I still do stuff in kind of tech industries now. Um, I'm going to kind of wheeled out as the science geek because, you know, give me 15 minutes on Wikipedia. At least I can then ask the right questions when we meet science people. <laughs> well, I, I like that. You, you told me about this. Um, is that a page or something that you can go and ask questions about things and then you have people with different levels of expertise answering those questions. What was that? Is that a page? Uh, a before, yeah, it's a, it's a website. I, I, a website? Yeah, it's one of these questions and answer things. There's things like Ask Jeeves and stuff like that, where you can, and where, which people just go, well, I've no idea about this, but, and then proceed to write three paragraphs on something they've got no clue about. <laughs> All um, right. And uh, um, for at least people seem to restrict themselves a bit more to, um, uh, to to only writing about things they know something about, and um, and sometimes questions come up about about um, self defence and things like that, and sometimes I get things off my chest and go no 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 that's not <laughs> slightly different 
it would yeah. work, but uh, yeah, if well, the sucker was there, then the knife wasn't real, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Well, there was an interesting question a while ago about uh, some guy asked, you know, why do people learn martial arts when, when they, you know, they can just get a gun? It's, it's quite yeah. American oriented. There's a lot of Americans using it. And, and I just, I, I just lost my patience a little bit with that. I think I started off, started off with, well, if the only tool you've got is a hammer, everything looks like a nail. Um, and then I'm going to refer back to his question. So, you know, if you'll forgive me, that is a ridiculous question because, uh, you know, there's all these things like, you know, the 21 foot rule about the law enforcement officer needs to be at least 21 feet away yeah. from the guy with a knife um, if he's going to have any chance of, and that's when he's on his guard of drawing his weapon using it. So, you know, what happens if a guy pulls a knife, he steps out of an alley, pulls a knife on you? What happens? There, if, there was probably well, a 13 year old boy uh, pretending he was a big guy. Yeah? Well, yeah, and all, just uh, in so many cases where the gun is not the tool to use for self-defense, and, and or even you know, even if you pull a gun on somebody because he's squared up to you in a bar, then you get thumped in the back of the head because you weren't taught the very basics of, of self-defense, which is that these situations are rarely one on one. And, and while you're pointing the gun at the other guy, some guy just sits over the back of the head with a bottle. Yeah, uh, things can turn. Can, things can turn ugly very easily. Yeah. Well, okay. Well, let's go back to your university thing. Tell us, you became a scientist. And then after that, of course, after so many years learning a different profession, you joined the market as a scientist. No. 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 Here we go. Really okay. So that, that, like, yeah, that's pretty much how it goes. Yeah. Like a lot of scientists do. So, uh, yeah, I trained as an accountant in London and, um, and then went pretty much straight after qualifying to work in the city. Wow. And doing mergers and acquisitions stuff and things like that. Interesting. Is, At least you did not become a uh, wine merchant in South of France. So like a majority of the people that finished degrees like that ended up going to. <laughs> no, no, it's only no. I, no, I lived on a no. My interest in wine only only uh, came up much later when I actually had a house with a cellar that I could put it in. Oh yeah, we have lots of stories to talk about your your wine cellar there. But anyway, so and then, of course, many years in the city, and then uh, how did Krav Maga came about? What, how, what was the, you walk past in front of a place, you saw someone walking around with a t-shirt or watch the video? I think there were, there were, a couple, there were two or three things where, it, you know, one of these things where you hear about something for the first time, and then you, you think, you know, I've never heard that before, and then two weeks later, it comes up again. You uh -huh. know, that, that kind of thing happens quite a lot. It's following me. Yeah, and I, I read an article about it, I think, in the newspaper, I can't remember. Um, what it was and uh, and then I saw I think there was an advert for someone doing it in London um, may have been on the tube or something like that and there were about two or three things when it came up came up and I thought you know I mean it would be nice to go back and do that again because I'd given up doing the karate a long time ago and this looks much more useful because you know the self-defense thing it would be I don't know I, I had a bit of a crisis of confidence because I was about what well, I'm, I can't actually remember how long ago it was now. It was about 48, 49. I thought, am I just having a midlife crisis here? You know, my dreams of being some kick ass urban warrior or whatever, just because I'm fantasizing about it because I'm 49 or 48. Yeah. Um, but then also, I was thinking, well, no, it's not just that, but maybe I should learn a bit more about it because, you know, I'm not as quick as I was. And maybe I can't run away as fast and I am quicker than my wife. So maybe just running away is not the option. Maybe, <laughs> maybe I have to stay <laughs> and actually do something. And the, um, and the fan the fourth, yeah. Yeah. So is it you no, know, it would be interesting, but it took me months actually to kind of get over myself. And I thought, do, you know, do why do I want to do this? Um it looks interesting, it looks um you know, as though it would be fun. Um it looks as though it might be useful, God forbid, that I should ever need it. But um and but I thought, you know, what's it gonna be like? Is it gonna be full of complete psychos who wear combat trousers for leisure wear at the weekends. Um, well, you got that bit, right? Well, it's, no. And, yeah, and, I, and I, we, I, have, we have all the qualities too, come on. Well, yeah, exactly. I, I, well, I, you, you know, you've seen them. I've got some combat trousers. I don't tend to wear them as leisure wear at the weekend. <laughs> so you, you became one of them. <laughs> but I became one of them. So I, and, and then I saw, um, so I did a little bit of research and I did a bit of research online and came across, uh, came across the Institute and um, saw a thing about, uh, about a trial and I thought, Go on, Simon, just, you know, grow a pair and try it out. And see what could like. possibly go wrong, yeah? What could possibly go wrong? And, you know, everybody was, uh, was you know, fantastic. It was, it was interesting. There were people like me doing it. It wasn't, 
full of psychos. Um, you know, yeah, and, yeah, they are and nice people. They are nice psychos. They have coffee after, you know. Yeah, yeah. and the, the, the nice the, the, the nice thing about it, of course, is you know it's not a, because it's not a competitive um, martial art or, or or sport. You know, people are not trying to beat you. They're trying to help you. You're, you're, the people you're training with are partners, friends. You know, they're, they're people who are helping you learn how to defend yourself. So, um, yeah, it's it, it's it was it was very friendly. So I started training in Hertfordshire back in the day when um, right uh, when we used to do it there. And uh, yeah, I think opening classes early, then, two thousand eleven. It's been I, I think I went to about the first ever class in Harpenden, and I went, which was right. yeah, probably about then. And you started so 2011. Yeah, okay, I, so nine years. Yeah, because I, 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 Facebook is my timeline. <clears throat> I don't remember anything. I remember flashes of things, and I would look at pictures. I know when this picture was taken, and I remember exactly what happened on that class, and you know what led to that picture. But don't ask me, you know, when we started here, there, or everywhere. I have to go back on Facebook, scroll all the way to 2010. And then read. Well, we're opening classes in this area, opening classes in those areas. It's a, uh, it's nice to, re a good reminder. Yeah, I think you'd started in St Albans, and then and then expanded into into Harpenden. Yeah, it was it was Harpenden, St Albans, um, Wellingarder City, um, Hartford. But yes, there we go. We had about four locations, four or five locations there, and one of them used to teach twice a week there. So yeah, that was really. Yeah. It was a busy, busy time driving to Sonar and back. 30 miles there, 30 miles back. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's not I easy. could do that with my eyes closed when I'm on the way back, easily. So, yeah, so started there. And that was um, with, with a few guys that I then went kind of through the, through the, the, the grades, the belts with. Um, I remember, I remember looking back, driving down to Crystal Palace where we used to do gradings right at the, right at the outset. And talk with, with two other guys and talking about uh, you know, what, you know how far would you like to how far would you like to get like at that point apart from an instructor I hadn't seen anybody over 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 P two level so as it was called then um, you know the idea of getting to G one or something like that was just a distant goal um, a dream um, one yeah. day yeah yeah because you know because you knew that was years away that was you know a lot of work and a lot of training and and. You know, you'd never seen anybody apart from the instructor who was at that level. It was, yeah. um, uh, at and the then, time, I remember the, some of the pictures. You, uh, Michael Walsh, was there because I remember a picture of him being choked by some other bloke there, almost killing him. And uh, there are a few, you know, things that come to my mind. Yes. It's been a yeah. while. Huh? Yeah. So that was uh, that was. Yeah. So if yeah, anybody wonders, can you take up Krav Maga later in life? I would have been so 2011. I think it was September. So I would have been 49. Then when I took it up. Well, wow. okay. Well, so that's the end. Then uh, you carry on practicing, training, putting time and effort towards it, and you reach the uh, brown belt, which is the G1 level. If you, yeah, we're talking about the old money. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That yeah, so that took. So I yeah, graded back um, every six months. That was the goal with regular you know regular training, try and you know, keep things moving. Then once you yeah once you get to that level, then then yeah every six months is not realistic really it's because it's not about just learning the techniques apart from the fact that you've got to know all the previous ones and 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 not only you've got to know them still but you've got to be better at them than you were when you first learned them yeah um and so, so you take yeah take your time after 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 g1 yeah, it's this whole story about the how much time do you have to you know to dedicate if you people are training, training uh, three four times a week sometimes we you know you know people that train uh six seven eight times a week they go to the 7 a.m. class and go back to work, come back in the evening and train again. So they are doing like two and a half hours of Krav Maga in one day. So they do this yeah. like you know, five days a week. Man, it's a lot. Well, yeah, then you, then you can learn. Yeah, and people, and people learn in different ways and, uh, and things like that. But uh, yeah, but it's, but it's not about... But, let me give it the but here. Some of the guys, even though they go through all that, they still not there yet which is, is very interesting to see this. And we don't, have, we don't have an explanation, apart from the fact that people learn different speeds and different ways. And is, or even the, the, the harshest one that I heard the other day, this is not for everybody. Might be the case. Uh, and, and it's not. And some, yeah, some people, you, you see people doing, um, you know, learning different ways. Some people like just to get the muscle memory. And, yeah. and, and I've always kind of wanted to analyze why you're doing something on the base. Okay, so... Why am I trying to get my body to do that? Because um, you're the scientist, come on! Of course, you want to know yeah, that. It, it, well, it is, and also you're trying you're trying to you're trying to understand the um, kind of the reason why you're doing it. And, and, and I, 
I, I think that way anyway, but hopefully then, you know, if you ever say, God forbid, have to do it for real, then you hope that when it all gets messy and the technique goes completely in your pot, at least you're trying to achieve the things you're trying to achieve rather than just go through your muscle memory. Yeah. But you actually understand, okay, the reason I'm doing this is because I'm trying not to get stabbed. It's not because Joe told me to move in this way. <laughs> yeah. the oh, probably the last thing you're going to remember with me, me there, yeah. all the instructors, the, anyway. The core reason why you're doing it is not to get stabbed or not to get punched or whatever you might be trying not to do. And then hopefully, yeah, hopefully yeah. those techniques will at least try and achieve that goal. But, um, yeah, but, but one of the important things is, apart from analyzing the stuff and looking through and trying to understand why you're doing this, which is very important. So you spend a lot of time practicing. You also did what not that many people would do, which is travel with us abroad. You went to Poland many times with shooting, yeah. trying to understand the other side of this and combine firearms with Krav Maga, which is the, you know, if you think about Israel, for them, it's like a normal Monday morning. For us, it's like, wow, once every now and then we go and, and use some firearms. Um, but did you think that helped you with um, a better understanding, adding all the concepts, all the principles and all the tools into this, this uh, big yeah, suit? I mean, I, you know, I think um, the, I mean, the way we do it um, with, you know, you don't do guns until quite late because, you know, the chance of somebody p pulling a gun and you are vanishingly small, really, in this country, having a very bad day if somebody pulls a handgun on you, having a really bad day if somebody pulls a long barrel weapon on you. Um, so, but... You know, I mean, it's, it's interesting. I, f I find Krav Maga endlessly interesting. There's always a, oh, yeah, but what if? And, okay, how would you deal with that? And, yeah, that's all well and good in theory, but, yeah, what happens if yeah. that happens? And you can, you can think about it in so many different ways and, and kind of put yourself, you can, you can almost train lying in bed at night, just lying there thinking, how would I actually deal with? Okay, what happens if there's two of them in? three of them and, oh yeah you can spend hours thinking about that you yeah. Can, yeah you can spend hours thinking so all that, yeah, i mean and, and I'm, you've you've said it I know, it's all about having a toolbox and how quickly can you reach in the toolbox and find something that works it doesn't have to be the perfect tool it just has to work and you have to find it first exactly. and, and the more you practice the the, the the better you are at reaching for the right tool um yeah the firearm stuff is i mean it's interesting i mean uh, one thing i skipped over actually in my in my history actually straight after university i went into the raf um in order to in order to be a pilot but i left that because it kind of tanked my relationship with my then girlfriend now wife um and if i'd still been in the rf i wouldn't be married to her so that's fine um but well, so i have actually been trained on how to use um firearms which i mean most people um, apart from maybe a shotgun for a clay pigeon shooting something like that i've not seen um uh, most people haven't seen the firearm and don't know how they work yeah. So, the, I mean, the one of the, I mean, the first one that we did, um, which was the very much the Krav Maga and firearms based one, um, it was very useful of putting that in, putting a firearm into it, in, you know, into context. How does the thing work? How do you make it safe? How do you, if you have to, make it dangerous? Yeah. Um, you know, if you don't know how the thing works, you're just presented with something. But, but it's, uh, I mean, I, I know somebody who's, his theory on guns is if you ever take one off somebody, you know, it might be a real firearm. It might not. It might be loaded. It might not. It might be properly maintained. It might not. One thing it definitely is, is a big heavy piece of metal. So you're better off just hitting him with it rather than pointing it at him and, and, and trying to threaten. Yeah, but it's, yeah. it, it demystifies, um, the, uh, demystifies the firearm. If you know how it works, um, you're not frightened of it because sure. you know that it's not going to do anything you don't want it to do if you know how it works. It's not going to suddenly go bang when you weren't expecting to. And, you know, doing things like putting your hand over the gun while somebody actually fires a live round out of it. You know, people... Yeah, that, that's, that's one of the, one of the exercises that we, we, you know, we get people most stressed when we do this in Poland is that one, which then after a while they realize this is very simple. Yes, it is very simple because now you understand the mechanics of the weapon. Exactly. You know I mean? If the barrel is not pointed at you, we can just put a finger over the, the, the ejection window there and that will be the end of it. The empty shell is not going to come out. The, the, the again. one is not going to go in, therefore you're going to have a problem, uh, and that's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can pull the trigger as many times as you like after that. It's not going to fire again. So and even people who have uh, uh, pistols and they maintain them all the time at the fire range is very common to have problems when you are firing. All of a sudden, there's a jam. In other words, the bullet didn't go into the chamber or did not pull the empty shell out the way it should. Something went wrong. Double feeding, and then you have to remove magazine and do that whole process of cleaning the weapon, and that takes time. And I imagine yeah. if you are taking time to do that, focus on your weapon, but someone is punching in the head at the same time. So how, you know, more complicated would that be? Yeah, it's, it was, I mean, it was, I, I thought, I mean, that, the, that course was, was excellent. Um, and and the, the thing I was, suppose I was more worried about, well, apart from 
a couple of things that were well one thing that was maybe better than i expected uh, and one thing was just different from what i expected i thought okay we're going to a polish military base you know what's it yeah we're going to be washing in stainless steel troughs and sleep, sleeping in bare springs and um uh, you know in a barracks and so on but no actually the facilities are fantastic i mean it's um it's an, it's an amazing facility um, and secondly, the thing that I was, I suppose, concerned about and was better as expected was the was the safety element as well. In that, you know, I mean, um, Bartosz and and, and you know, with you there, you know that people have got, you know, are, are really controlling the safety, and people are not going to do anything stupid. Everybody's in lines; nobody steps out of line, and and you know. Uh, um, people are pulled very rapidly back into line if anybody's doing anything that they shouldn't be people are being watched all the time so one thing I, you know I did always feel safe which you know I trust myself I didn't necessarily trust the guy next to me um, yeah, yeah you know the story you have to the more you do the more you practice the basics you know very simple step by step you become more comfortable with that and then eventually you can move into something more complicated later which is you know, maybe the second or third event uh, you probably attended there where you can, you could switch between a short weapon, like a pistol to a, a machine gun, long rifle, and then you know, be able to flip between those two sort of a tools and, and still be able to perform and use some tactics, which is the most important, not just run around with a gun in your hand. Yeah. And, and, and I mean, and I, I, you know, again, there's, there's, there's the kind of analysis of understanding how it works, but there's also the, you know, the muscle memory. If something does go wrong, you get the jams when you get thrown into those. Yeah those drills where where you know the thing's going to jam or you know or well except you don't, you don't know when it's going to jam or it's going to run out of ammunition and things like that and you don't panic um but uh yeah i mean it's it, it's an interesting it's an interesting exercise and it's a, and it's a, an interesting add-on i mean it's fun to do just for its own sake um uh it's, it's interesting i mean a few people there wear gloves because you know i mean guns are big heavy bits of metal and particularly um old russian made ak's are full of sharp jagged edges and things like that yep. and so you a lot of people wear gloves but i always will not I, I try and put it into a self-defense context which is if i'm ever handling an ak or a handgun of, of any description in this country it's because i've tamed it off somebody yeah and chances are i won't be wearing gloves so i might as well get used to handling them with gloves uh, sorry with um, get used to handling yeah, them without yeah. gloves because if i ever am doing this i won't be wearing gloves this so was one of the few bits of skin missing the main issues we had was people, you know, overthinking. Yes, but the guy's pointing a rifle at you. He already fired five magazines. The barrel is really hot. Yes, it is. But you don't know that because you're not focusing on how hot the barrel is. You're focusing the barrel is pointed at your head. Now, if you're going to grab that and burn your hand, congratulations. You managed to avoid getting a bullet in your head. You're a lucky man. And the burning, the scar on your hand would be a nice, uh, you know, uh, yeah, well, badge of honor for the future if you manage to escape from that one. That would be nothing. Yeah, the amount of adrenaline you have going through you at that point, you won't even notice. You're like, you're following <laughs> morning, you're waking up, why is my hand hurt? <laughs> so, yeah. Oh, yeah, I remember. I have a finger missing, but that's okay. I didn't even feel it. Yeah. Wow, that's interesting. And 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 um, regarding Krav Maga, I mean, we, we've been interviewed different people, guys that really 100% into military Krav Maga, guys in the IDF. Uh, they have a completely different point of view. We in the UK only have the civilian Krav Maga, and it's still, I mean, I, even though we've been trying to do this for many years, but it's still kind of a very early stages. Um, we don't even have a, a females-only sort of a you know sector here, if you like. We do have classes, but it's not as ideal as we want it to be. We hope this is going to change in the future. We don't have any black belts, you know, female black belts running classes and stuff like that. So we focus on, on the civilian side. From the civilian point of view, how do you see all these techniques and stuff that we teach? Is that uh, reasonable? Because some of the stuff, you know, was uh, British, but don't tell Israelis, from uh, many years ago. You know, and eventually they went to Palestine, ended up teaching people over there. But some of the techniques are very old, uh, 1914, and you go up 1939, uh, 40. Uh, especially with the long weapons. Do you see that this day is still relevant there or it's time for us to start, for us what I mean is everybody, not just me, eh? uh, adapting to Krav Maga into something more realistic, more to this time now? Well, I think we do that already. I mean, we don't do long barrel weapons till whatever it is, G3. We don't uh, do yeah. guns at all till G1, unless you do it, you know, for, you know, out of interest as, as one lesson or something like to get people an introduction before they have to do it. Yeah. Um, you know, it's much more likely that somebody's going to, try and punch you, slap you, kick you, get you in a headlock, stab you, hit you with a stick, grab your hair, grab your wrist. Uh, you know, all those things are, uh, you know, are useful to know and, 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 and much more important than, than guns. You need, to, you need to have all those things nailed before you really, you know, get into stuff that's more esoteric. Okay. Um, so, you know, and I think that's right. And 
and I, and I know that you put quite a bit of emphasis and, and I think perhaps people wonder why on striking skills and so on because you know you can stand there doing fancy knife blocks all day long but eventually you're going to get tired or you're going to make a mistake and you know the, the fifth or the seventh or the tenth will get through and you'll get stabbed and you'll die so what you have to be able to do is end the fight you know where you have to be able to kick him in the bollocks or punch him on the nose or yeah. just do enough to be able to get away and if you can't do that just defending yourself isn't actually enough it would, it would be difficult yeah yeah you, you, you're, 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 it's, you're just delaying it really if somebody's coming at you and trying to stick a knife in you and the assumption he doesn't try once and then get bored and go away which is fairly <laughs> unlikely um, then life. then he's going to come back for a second go and so you know it's important not to get stabbed but it's equally important to try and prevent him coming back for a second go or a third go or a fourth go because eventually mm -hmm. one of them is going to get through so, so if you have to if you have to put two guys side by side the simon that joined us many years ago and the simon today what is the difference between of course never mind the age i'm talking about uh, when you walk down the street the the awareness the you know the, the fitness for sure uh, even though your fitness not just for karma guy because you have your gym in your house and you exercise like crazy but um how do you see what is a big big uh, curve if you like i think it's just i think it's awareness i'll t um, i'll uh, of of well knowledge of my own abilities and my own limitations as well i i i know what I, I know what's unrealistic to try and achieve and that's one of the things you kind of learn i think as you progress you you start off and you see somebody who's at um you know orange belt level and and and, and he he looks really kick-ass ninja and you think wow those guys are so slick and then you get to that level yourself and by that stage you're beginning to realize your own limitations and what you can't do and 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 how much more there is to learn so you kind of you start off thinking that very quickly you're going i mean you're always learning things that are that are, that are useful and you know how not to get you know, punched or whatever but perhaps more importantly when just to run away Oh. Um, and and not and that you're not going to be a you know a, a superhero and you're and and you know the best way to deal with you know, the best way to deal with somebody with a knife who wants your wallet is give him your wallet <laughs> yes, your, the, the contents of your wallet nor your dignity which are the yeah. only two things you might be fighting for neither of those is worth risking your life for so just Give him your wallet, cancel your cards, go home in one piece. This is, this that is, is the one, only goal. One of the things that when you're training scenarios, sometimes I joke about it, you know, it's part of the training. Give the wallet because it's something that you experienced and you trained this before. If that is the case, I'm with the family. There's no point in me trying, you know, turning tornado kicks around there and, and ended up endangering everybody. So there you go. Have the wallet. Yeah. Bye bye. The only, yeah, the only rule is go home alive. Yeah. That's the, uh, so you, you learn that. So I think. Partly, so uh, partly a confidence in my own abilities, partly an understanding, um, and 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 an awareness as well. You, so, you know, some of the just thinking about situations and so on. So, for I, I'll give you an example. I was walking um, through London. We were heading back to the car. We'd been to the theatre with my wife, and we ended up going down and quite a long alley. And it's a it's a long straight alley. There's an entrance at one end. There's an entrance at the other, and there is no exit. <laughs> and as I was walking down that. Um, I was thinking, well, you know, it, it would actually be a good, and you know, one of the one of the things we, uh, you know, we, we we talked about is, you know, it's avoid situations where you might be the victim. That's the best way to uh, to uh, self defence is don't be the victim in the first place. And um, but we were we were there, and I was just thinking, this would be a good place if you had two people who were in communication with each other either end. One could step in one end, one could step in behind you, and you're there, and you're in the middle. And and I, I did actually mention some something about that to my wife, and she looked at me like. Oh, do you yeah. think about everything in terms of Krav Maga? Because I'm a bit of a Krav Maga. <laughs> yes, when you go like, yes, um, yes. What would Jack Reacher do in yeah. this case? Wait a minute. And I said, I said, um, I, I said, no, 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 I don't. No, yeah, no, don't worry. But what I didn't tell her. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, you were doing this for many, 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 you know, a long, long time ago, many minutes for the, prior yeah. to that. What I, what I didn't tell her is I had already rolled up um, the program for, uh, oh, from oh, the, th the theatre program. And, and actually, some people who've done um, kind of green belt ratings with me, where we have to do, um, we have to do um, improvised weapons. Improvised weapons. Um, well, if they're watching this, will recognise that. Of actually, a, you know, a rolled up magazine or a rolled up newspaper, something like that, increases your reach by twelve inches, you know, yeah. or, or, or so. And if you and think that doesn't hurt, to stick that in your eyeball and then you tell me later what was the yeah, result. And huh? it smacks you in the face with a rolled up theatre program. You're going to know about it. And um, so. 
you know, I, I, you know, as soon as we walked along the, <laughs> to the end of the alleyway and walked home and got in the car and went home and everything was fine. And I decided not to tell my wife to wear that. But it's just, yeah, you know, you, 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 you increase your awareness, you increase your, your ability to, to, to maybe plan ahead and think, you know, maybe I'll just go a different way. Something's kicking off. And yeah. um, it doesn't mean that you're going to get, you certainly don't go around um, looking for trouble. And in fact, since I've been doing it, the only time, um, and, and my family was in a, was in a cinema and some guy was, re was really um, kicking off. And eventually one of us um, uh, said, right, I've enough and step, stepped up to go and have a word with him. And, wow. and that was my wife, who's five foot three. And I, and I actually said to her, sit down, leave it. He's not it. Yes. <laughs> Live with me, boys. I'll sort him out. Yeah. Yeah. And I was wow. the one that had to calm her down. That's amazing. Amazing. Well, you know, um, but let's, let's, let's change a little the subject and, 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 talk about the the experience now because uh, i can give you my point of view on that experience which was a completely different than your point of view on experience right. and uh that experience that even today you know is, is with me every now and then uh but, but tell us there was a grading a while back tell us about the whole thing from the beginning from your side a whole thing from the beginning well i i I'd noticed um for a few only for a few weeks beforehand i got occasional if we're talking about that incident, Jake, that one, um, yeah, that one. Yes. Um, some some pains in my chest if I exercise a bit hard, but I mean it wasn't pains in my chest in in that kind of sense. It kind of, I just felt a little bit not as fit as I as I normally am, and I didn't really think anything of it. And um, I was uh, I've been talking. I was training quite a bit with Powell, and he at one point said, "Look, you really should go and see the doctor." Um, so I did go and see my GP, and. Um, and she said, you know, you're not, you're not ticking any of the boxes or anything like that. People are normally getting here with chest pains or having difficulty walking up the stairs to the surgery, not complaining about mild discomfort three miles into an interval training session. So, no, no, they're, they're complaining about not being able to do a full backflip like you did. Or to, no, uh, that that. The, the keep up. <laughs> was it keep up, the one you jump from your hands to your feet, that one? Yeah, no, I only learned to do that after that. After that. Oh, it was after that, okay. So anyway, she said, well, I'll, I'll send you to the hospital for some tests. And I went and they did a, um, an ECG on a trail. Oh, everything else was fine. You know, blood pressure was fine. Resting heart rate 50. Blood pressure actually on the low side. Um, ECG is all normal and, and everything. But I went to the hospital. They did an ECG on a treadmill. And that showed up a glitch that they didn't like. Um, so they said, oh, we'll send you to, um, they'll, we'll, we'll send you to get a, an angiogram to, to, to test that out. And I went, okay, fine. I put my hand, uh, hand on the door handle and said, I'm not going to have a heart attack in the meantime, am I? And he said, no, you're not. No, uh, that, not was, son, yeah. that was Monday afternoon. The following Sunday afternoon was my G3 grading. And um, we were about, and, and I, remember, I remember mentioning to you, um, um, I said, you know, I'm, I'm a little bit worried about the stamina aspect of it because I don't feel quite as fit. And you went, you know, don't worry, we'll look after you. Thanks, Joe. I there didn't we go. realize that I would owe you my life. <laughs> See, the doctor said he wouldn't have a heart attack. We are, I was more, you know, like, keep it, keep it generic. We're going to look after yeah, you. You were yeah. on the way, so yeah, don't worry, we'll let you have a rest an hour or two in <laughs> if you really need one. Well, but you attended um, a pre grade, which is what I found funny. You were there on the pre grading with no problems. Pre grading, you went home, everything was fine. So, you know, four, four hours, hours was so long. no problem at all. Okay, people are usual trying to kill one another, you know, at yeah, a yeah. higher level, and you survived that. Yeah, okay. I survived that, that just fine. But then I'd had the appointment in the meantime, and then I turned up for the grading. And so we were about an hour in, I think. It was about, we started at one, it was about quarter past two or something, something like that, if I remember right. And, um, and we'd been doing a lot of groundwork. We'd been doing all the throws. Um, we'd been doing um, uh, takedowns and so on, which is quite exhausting, not least because I'm six foot one and quite light. <laughs> And Peter, who I was doing it with, and the other guy uh, is a little bit shorter than me. Heavy, heavy hands. Heavy. Heavy. <laughs> it's quite difficult to throw. So it's quite exhausting. And I just, at some point, I just, I just felt quite tired. And I was getting that just bit of a bit of pain. Felt feels like somebody pressing their knuckles on your sternum. It wasn't severe, but I just felt tired. And I turned to Tibor to say, and I formulated the sentence in my head, I might just need to take a break. And I, apparently, I never said it. According to Tibor, I just turned and looked at him. And then the next thing I remember was four hours later in Bart's hospital, looking at the ceiling going, uh, what happened? I have a vague memory of being carried down a stretcher and apologizing to you for having screwed up your grading. Yeah, that was, that was about a... 80 people there all trying to, uh, all trying to get through their grading and have some guy die on the floor in front of them, which was, um, yeah. 
from from my point point of view, and I was very simple. I was at the registration table doing yeah, something yeah. there, and then as I had this feeling, I look over my shoulder, I see Tibor with his eyes this big. This across the across the sports hall, by the way, and then I looked at Tibor. I looked down. There was you lying face down, and I just thought to myself, for that second, everything froze, and I'm like, no, 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 not today, not today. So there was that sprint. I don't know how I got there. But then luckily you fell on the mat, which was had a little judo mat. See? Help I'm it. In case you're going to have a heart attack, you fall on the mat. So see, mat, yeah. take the box. And um, yeah, and then the people look at me and says, oh, he's not breathing. And I look back at him and was like, oh, really? <laughs> oh, really? So then there was a case of flipping you out of there and then checked your eyes, which feel like, you know, your pupils were this big. And I thought, this is no good. So... You know, from all the training that I had in the last few years, we've done, you know, CPR or whatever they call these days, um, uh, many times on a little doll and, a, you know, improvised stuff, but on the real life for the first time. So you never know exactly how deep you need to go, but I just went as deep as I could back then, you know, a little bit of a power. Um, no, I'm, and I'm grateful. And my never killed hurt, anyone, but very... damaged a few ribs, but never killed anybody. And my chest hurt for a long time afterwards. Yeah. Um, uh, I tell you, you, yeah, you was, uh, but that's, that's fine. That's what you need. And, so, and that's what I've been told since by the, um, you know, by the cardiac rehab people, yeah. it's all about the quality of the CPR and how quickly you get it. And so the, the time that you were there, I mean, no longer, no more than 30 seconds, no more than a minute, no more than a minute. It was a pretty much sprinting 20 meters if so. And, uh, and that was it. But then we had a few other people there, some doctors around, but that when the stuff hit the fan, you know the story. Some people freeze, some people fight, some people just take off. Uh, and some people just step up and do what they need to do. And, uh, yeah, well, I don't know. I don't know. Ask me uh, later, the no, no, second time maybe, but that was a very interesting one. Um, but we had about three rounds of that and you came back, you know, and me and me, it was like, yeah, don't go towards the light, Sam. If there's a light there somewhere, you just come back. There's, there's no other way out, okay? Uh, not today, at least. Because if I had to explain your wife, like, look, I have no memory to tell you. I, I, I don't remember hitting the floor even. Yeah. Um, I, I remember turning to Tibor and then I'd say vague memory of being taken out on the stretcher. And I remember grumbling about the oxygen mask, which didn't fit properly. That's didn't idea. fit properly. No, that was when we had about half of the fire brigade from that area stand in a hall, the two different paramedics, yeah. two different crews. They leaving the lady on a bicycle show up there. Well, that was 20 minutes later, that was. By the time. That was, yeah, it was towards the end where they were no memory dragging you out of there. No apologizing for having uh, for having disrupting the grading i was like yeah yeah, i must remember that one i should make a t-shirt for that one. and uh and then you know the the this funny second part of that was actually to bring those almost 60 people we had there back yeah. and some of them in absolutely pieces you know and uh, well, then yeah quite a few people i knew there and <laughs> yes exactly no idea whether it survived or not the 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 psycho side of it was i said to everybody we cannot send these people home now because otherwise you're never going to see them again I don't want this to be the, the, the best memory of this situation here. So everybody back here again, sit down. Let's talk about stress, people. How are you feeling? Is your heart rate very high up there? Are you crying, some of you? Are you shaking like me? And then I uh, said, uh, we need to make this a uh, you know, real life scenario example. You just defend against someone on the street, had to exchange a few punches. Someone got injured almost badly. Yeah? And now we need to continue. So back five minutes of warm up again, and we continue as if nothing happens. I mean, uh, I would have been signed, uh, you know, uh, a completely psychopath that day. Uh, you know, you need you need some me medical help, Joe. Go to the hospital. Don't come back. Um, but then we managed to finish the whole thing. In in between, I was on the phone with your wife, trying to yeah. break the news, not breaking the news. Yeah, she does never want a phone call from you again. <laughs> <laughs> that would be crazy. Um, and, uh, I think the time I woke up, you were there. You were in, you were in the hospital. Yeah, no, no. as I tell you, I told my wife, I said, we're going to have two things here. Once we show up there, well, she's going to give me a hug or give me a punch in the face. So be ready for both. My hands are behind my back. I'm not going to even move. Just take as it is. You're going to walk away, okay? So be prepared. But uh, luckily, it, was the, it, was the, you know, it wasn't the punch in the face, but uh, it was interesting. And, uh, and after that, you have this um, stand to put in your heart and, and tell me about yeah. the, the recovery uh, from that. Uh, yeah, and it, and it, it, it is um, uh, seriously all down to the quality of the trimming. You know, there were, I know you and um, and a few other people there who were well trained and pretty determined I was not going to die that day. And that is what makes the difference. Um, I've been told the chances of surviving what I had are around the 2% mark. Wow. And, and even within surviving, um, most people are struggling on with ongoing damage to their 
um, to their heart function. And, and I don't have any at all. I had a, a test about six months later and the guy said, if I hadn't told the guy who actually ran the test that you'd had a heart attack, you wouldn't have been able to tell. Wow. Um, and uh, so yeah, I can, I can train, I can go to the gym, I can take up gymnastics as you do. When you as you do, great, yeah. You You're um, gonna learn how to do backflips after that, as as normally people would do, yeah. Yeah, I mean that's that's it's it's interesting actually because it it does help to be flexible and agile doing Krav Maga. I mean, it's not something that it you know that the Krav Maga focuses on because the idea is to teach anybody to do it, even if you're not flexible and agile. Um, but it helps to be. Um, so I thought, it, yeah, I thought it would help to be able to, yeah, and it does psych out your opponent if you can, if you fall over and you can do a kip up back to your feet. <laughs> yeah, that's an impressive attack. As I keep saying, if you cannot fight your attack, it goes and it entertain him, yeah. Wow. So, and, and after that, how long ago was that? Three years, three and a half years? Uh, it was um, four years. It was June the four years. 26th, 2016. 23rd, wow. June the 23rd, 2016. Four years already. Four years already. Four, the time is ticking, eh? I know it's remarkable. It seems, um, in some ways, not very long ago, and in other ways, well, a whole lifetime ago. Yeah, well, so I guess the doctor just resets your button, says, "Congratulations, your first birthday will be next year. We start again. You have another fifty years to live, at least." I do kind of celebrate my birthday on the twenty-third of um, June, and I shall raise a glass to you on the twenty-third of June. Jeez, that's uh, something for us to remember. Yeah. Well, okay. So, and then after that, you took some time off, and uh, when when did you decide to come back training? Um, so yeah, I, I did, so I, I didn't want to push my luck. So I, 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 I didn't do much in the gym. I didn't, um, yeah, and, uh, yeah, you get a kind of a bit of, a, a bit of mixed feet, um, kind of mixed feelings. On the one hand, your blood runs cold and you think, you know, crikey, I, I just nearly left a 53 year old widow, which is no age at all. And 19 and 21 years old sons without a father. Yeah. And then on the other hand, you have this strangely euphoric feeling of, I just dodged a massive <laughs> bullet. Yeah, yes. I, Bobby uh, yeah. That one, hey, I'm, eh? I'm immortal. I don't even need to look crossing the road now. You know, it's exactly. Yeah. Um, so then it's a strange mixture of those two feelings. Um, so yeah, I left it for oh, a let, bit. Let me, just, let me just add that that happened on a Sunday. And by Wednesday, Simon showed up in one of the classes. I was there teaching a class. Look in the corner, everybody stopped and froze. Like, what's going on? And then you walked through the door. So died on a Sunday, back on a Wednesday after three days. So we should call you Jesus one hour, eh? Yeah, it was, it was, yeah. they, they would have actually- According to the, yeah. land, the, the legend, of course, I wasn't there, so. They, they would have, um, they, yeah, they would have let me out on the Tuesday, but I had to wait. They wanted me to participate in a, in a trial. And frankly, I was, uh, they needed to ask my permission because they needed to stick various needles and things and put me in a CT scanner and, and so on. But I was so brimful of gratitude to the NHS at that point. I'd have said yes to just about anything. And um, so I had to stay till the Wednesday morning. And we, yeah, we were coming out of London because uh, I wasn't allowed to drive for a week. And uh, my wife had come to pick me up and we were driving out of London and I said, um, Normally we'd uh, today's well, Wednesday, we'd, you know. We'd go up the M one, but could, yeah, could we go up the could we go up the A one? Because I knew you would, I knew you would be taking the Hatfield class as as, as we had on a Wednesday evening, and um, I said, could we go up the A one instead? And you know, my wife said, why? I said, because I I want to go. We'll be there at about eight o'clock. Yeah. So the class you were about half an hour into the class, and I walked in at that point. Yeah, I'm completely fit and healthy. Signed off by the doctors. Yeah, go live your life. You're absolutely fine. Um, you're a very lucky man, thanks to that um, Joe wow. senior guy. And so, some of the uh, guys, yeah, some, 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 of the guys that, some of the guys training at that class, well, the other other grading. So when they saw yeah, you yeah. walking through the door, they didn't know what to say. They were just, just look at me, look at you, look at me. I was like, yeah, that, that's Simon. He wouldn't, anyone else would have gone home straight, never see us again. But, uh, yeah, you know, here he is. You know, maybe still a little bit of stretching before he goes home, most likely. No, the, well, the, the main thing I tell you, it's I mean, it's not it's not something to aspire to because you people might not be as lucky as, as, as I was. But but the um, to be able to walk up to the guy that saved your life and thank him personally is is, no, no. is a fantastic feeling. I tell I, you, I, I I don't see that. You know you know me. I, I see this like a team effort. We had more people there. Some of them, you know, when I run to do to call the paramedics or to grab them by the neck and drag them to the place there, which they hated by the way, but. And I, I couldn't care less about those two kids. So just get your machine. I'll carry it. Give it to me and I'll take it there. Let's get there quick. Yeah. Uh, but there's more people putting their hands on you and trying to zap you with that. No, machine, I know they were. That taser. I know there's a whole bunch and I'm grateful to all of them. I, I remember actually when I was in Poland, um, I was talking to Alan and, um, you know, and, and 
and and I said, I, you know, I mean, I don't know who else. And he said, oh yeah, I was I was there. I've been trained, and so I, I was one of the ones pounding on your chest. And I said, oh, sorry, I'm not, I didn't know. Thanks, uh, mate. Yeah. <laughs> we we use the hands, we use our feet, we use everything to try to get the machine yeah. working again. But interesting. Oh, okay. And and on the long run, I mean, four years later. What is the mindset? Because um, the physical side, we can see that you're there better than before. But did anything change here? Because people go through all sorts of changing values, changing attitude and stuff like that. Uh, uh, with something stressful like that happened. Did that any, made any difference to you? Did it change anything? Yeah. I, yeah. When you've had an actual death experience, then it's, you, you, yeah, you, 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 you have a different perspective on life. You know, certain things don't become as important and, and, you know, just getting the most out of what, because you, you makes you realize you never know how much longer you've got so just make yeah make the most of it i think i'm more positive um and uh yeah in a way kind of happier really you 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 think you know that that was yeah that could have been it yeah. very 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 easily um, well, yeah. my point is because i'm 49 now even though i look like 48 i know i know uh, but the very point is i'm looking at the days like uh, let's enjoy the day forget about tomorrow tomorrow is another story we don't know what's there so all this thing about living the future sometimes get people with anxiety and so all the things there is always looking at the yesterday today and let's try to make it better um you know just take it easy you gotta make, make the most of it yeah of what it, don't go crazy. Got, but if, imagine you haven't gone through something like that i mean that would have been probably me sitting on the street giving everything away and going come on people give us a hug but that would be me yeah? and of course not you and and what is that? Any any physical changes? Any habits that you change after that, or you just went back to normal and had no? Yeah, physics? I'm trying to get back as 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 normal. I, I mean, I think being fit helped. So I'm you know I'm determined to 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 stay fit. Um, and but other than that, now I mean, the, the, there is the, there's a bunch of drugs that they um, that they give you if you've had a heart attack, and um, it's a, it's a standard set of drugs that that and they're it's on the basis that well if you don't need them and there's a bit of a debate about whether i do need them because um i had a very good outcome you're talking um, about those was it called the statins or those, those? Well, the stat, yeah they, they, they give you those but, um, my cholesterol was very slightly high not something they even would have bothered treating but and they're not sure that, that was the cause of it and now my stat, now my cholesterol level is really low so um, that's fine and they give you the, um, small doses of beta blockers and things like that which just right. relaxes the heart and it's one of these statistical things if we give everybody those then fewer people die within so many years of having had a heart attack so um but it takes the kind of top end of 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 what my heart rate will get to i used to be able to cruise doing a triathlon at you know my heart rate at 165 and that was fine but this is, that was probably now maybe 10 years ago so i probably wouldn't be able to do that anyway but it won't it won't go above about 140 even if I'm sprinting flat out now. Right. And, and so you know I said to my cardiologist I said so I guess I'm not going to be running any more triathlons and he just went he just shrugged and went nobody needs to run triathlons. <laughs> yeah. Why why would you do that? Yeah. yeah do something else. Yeah. That, that's uh, a very yeah, good answer. Well, I took up the gymnastics. So. Well, and then how you became a gymnast? So you're there doing backflips and. Uh, front front flips and stuff like that and did you feel anything yeah I, 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 no, yeah i never I, I wanted to be able to do i wanted to be able to do a one-handed cartwheel and i want and i had a dream of being able to do a kip i had no idea whether it was even feasible at my age whether i was strong enough or flexible enough or whether it's mostly technique and it turns out a lot of these things are just technique yeah and, well, well, for people who don't know what you're talking about is the one you lie on the floor put your hands behind your shoulders pretty much you're behind your head kick both feet up in the air, push with the hands and land back on your feet. So you go from lying down, curling and like a spring back That's up right. again. Yeah. It's when most people will try land on the kidneys and bang, and hit the floor very hard. Yeah, a lot of people try, and, That's the end try of it. and flick their feet forward to try and get the rotation, but that doesn't work because you just end up too close to the floor. And so you don't have time to get around. It's all about getting the height. No. And one guy, my gymnastics class just... Um, he wasn't even one of the coaches and we were talking about i'd been doing it about six months and so on and learning cartwheels and things. i couldn't even do a proper cartwheel when i started and um talking about what i wanted to get out of it and i said yeah I, i'd love to be able to do a kip up but i have no idea what i could do they went oh i'll teach you to do a kip up and i think it was 
about 15, 20 minutes before I did my first one from him just spending time saying, no, 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 up, get higher and, and, and so on. And then, it's, and then it's just, and it's a lot of practice. And if you can't oh, yeah, break the pro, then... Most of the stuff that we put ourselves through is, oh, I cannot do it, but it's the mental block. Once someone shows you the, the, the steps and the way of performing it, all of a sudden it's like, yes, you have the capability, you have the, the skills, yeah. you have the strength. You believe you can do it. And the and power, and all of a sudden now he went from a non-believer to a fully committed, let me show you, let me teach some other people now. It's, uh... it's, yeah, no, I mean, there's, a, there's an element of that in, in Kramagar as well. I, one of the things inspiring I, I kind of learned is, is almost to relax. A lot of people when inspiring tense up um, very much. And if you're really tense, you, you, can't, you can't move fast enough and you, you, don't, you don't see things coming. And, and I remember sparring just years ago with a, with a good friend and, um, and he, you know, he said, and, and it, was, it was just psychological. I, I, I'd beaten him before before he before we started because i was a couple of grades higher than him and oh. um and he just believed he didn't believe that he could do it he, he could do and it so yeah. he tensed up and i was more relaxed and just and everything he threw i could see coming because he was just he was just too tense as yeah it's part of that is believe you can yeah. do it and that enables you to relax which makes it fantastic um, and let me ask you the final question because we've been talking for almost an hour even though you know it feels like a few minutes but uh, you know That's almost great. almost 50 minutes if you like if for the more technical people um uh, uh which kind of advice would you give to anyone who's probably watching this in the future and going i you know i want to do something i'm i'm too old i'm already 45 you know that whole life story people feel <laughs> like they're gonna die when they're 45 but some of them do but you know that's not the case not for everybody so what would be the case? Would you ask, you know, in, uh, any martial arts, any sort of form of activity, uh, fitness, how do you see this? What would be the advice? No, well, definitely age is, is not a barrier. It's not a barrier to, and I'm not the oldest person I know who's, who's done Krav Maga either. So, uh, you know, I'm taking it up at, at, at that age as well. Um, age is no barrier. Um, age is no barrier to doing something to, uh, you know, to keep yourself fit. And it doesn't have to be, Fancy. You don't have to go to a gym and lift weights or run triathlons or whatever. It's years since I ran one there. Um, and you know, anything. You know, body weight exercises at home. Um, and well, actually, I mean, eat well is a is a is a is a key part of it. They do say you can't out train a bad diet, um, yeah. and you it's can't yeah, you can't get away with if you if you eat well ninety five percent of the time, then you can afford to. You know, to uh, to have days when you're not particularly eating well. What you can't afford to do is eat crap 95% of the time, and then 5% of the time go, mm, better not have that. I'm watching my weight. That's not going to make any difference at all. Yeah, I'll have a, I have I mm have -hmm. a double double you know box of uh, donuts with a diet coke, please, to make sure that I can psychologically feel better. The fact I'm having a diet coke. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. I don't. So I'm constant, 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 like constant fitness, constant maintenance of the body. Is the yeah, but you don't have to be. It doesn't have to be an obsession. I mean, I'm not. I'm not obsessed with these. I try. I try and go to the gym. I try and eat healthily. But you know, if it, it, there's no point in making your life miserable if you're if you're not enjoying it because you're being obsessed about it, you, you yeah. don't have to do that. You don't have to be obsessed with with Krav Maga to get a lot out of it. You know, when I started, I used to go once a week and then and then and then twice a week and maybe I go three times a week in the run up to gradings. You know, it wasn't. You know, I've got to have I have a wife and children. I didn't want to be out of the house every evening doing it it's not it's not a, it's not my entire lifestyle and you can get a lot out of it and and starting when you're older is not um you know it's not a problem and that's the thing i mean you know if you were trying to take up you know taekwondo when you're you know, 48 49 then you might have a bit of difficulty with the flexibility you know, Krav Maga is designed to be able to you know you can you can learn it you know, you, i mean i'm 57 now i'm 58 next month now i could start learning it now and and still get stuff out of it and, and, and uh, it's not you know, um, you know, being older is not a barrier being you know and I've trained with you know I, I, I've trained with guys who are older I've trained guys who are heavier I've trained you know so you know being overweight is not it, you know is not a problem being small you know I've trained with uh, you remember Charlotte um, who you know used to train with us in Hertfordshire yeah you know, yeah. she whatever she's five foot three and 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 light yeah, Dangerous crazy. Stuff, yeah, you know, but sure. yeah, yeah, complete nutcase. The mindset that. is the yeah of a giant, which is important. Yeah, but you know, you know, she she was a perfect example of you know of why Krav Maga is is, is good because you know she fought to her strengths. She was she was yeah. light, she was agile, she was fast, and she fought really dirty. Um, and it's the only way she's going to win. She you know she she went she 
she weighed about 55 kilograms and she's never going to win a boxing match against me because I've got a longer reach and I'm bigger and heavier and she's never going to win a wrestling match. But you know, I remember you know, one of the classes in for sure we were doing some combinations and I was throwing like, you know, uh, 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 jab, cross and the roundhouse kick and combination like one, two, three, one, two, three. So then I pull her to the side and I say, look, come real close, get the distance right. The, the pads were very close to my head. So she was throwing this jab, cross, and a roundhouse kick, jab, cross, roundhouse kick. We did this like 10, 20 times. She says, very good. You got the timing is right. Everything is okay. Off you go now. So I went around to check someone else. And as I turned my back, I heard this bang sound. And I turn around, one guy lying on the floor, and she's standing there with her hands on her head like this, like in her face, like, oh, my gosh. I say, what happened? I, I kick him in the head. It's like, you know, and it wasn't the smaller guy in the room, it was the biggest guy in the room. But he went with his hands down completely, not knowing what we just practiced. And, she, you know, sparring nice lights, she went jab, cross, and roundhouse kick, and boom, on the side of his neck. And that was, that was it. There was him on the floor looking up and going, what was that? Was a punch or kick? I know who that was. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was me. beautiful. Yeah, no, it was fantastic. Yeah, and she had so that little light in the back of the eyes, like the shine going, wow. You know, I dropped yeah. this guy with a he's kick. The guy, he's six, he's six foot one and 15 and a half stone. And she, yeah, she hit him. <laughs> yes, it did right in the middle. Yeah, it was bang. Yeah, so I mean, that's a, you know, that's a perfect example of, of why, because we're, you know, we're not teaching, um, you know, we're, we're not, we're not, we're not, we're not teaching things with rules. We're teaching how to defend yourself. And if you, you know, if you, if you know, and, and also, you know, she's not, she's not trying to win a fight. She isn't going to win a boxing match. She isn't going to win a, a wrestling yeah. match. She's, she's, she's doing enough so that you kick somebody in the head like that or kick him in the groin or, or whatever. All she's doing is enough to be able to get away. Yeah. And, and, you know, and, and anybody, it doesn't matter whether you're 50 odd, whether you're five foot two and, and a girl or whether you're, you know, overweight or whatever, everybody can learn from that. Excellent. Simon, we've been here for an hour and we're trying to keep those interviews an hour long to avoid, you know, being too long and too complicated when people come to watch them later. Uh, but thanks. Thanks for taking the time. It was nice to be able to register all this because I'm sure uh, people will like to know this in the future to understand that perhaps because they went through something similar or perhaps they know somebody has gone through something similar or perhaps, you know, whatever that is, people can take something from it and learn and uh, improve as we do. That's the whole plan of trying to make people better. Good. Well, it's a real pleasure, Jake. Anytime. Excellent. Man, thank you very much. Thanks, everybody, for watching this, and I'll see you guys uh, when I see you there.